Metals and Mining, time to get in 2017. Thorsten, welcome again. Let's talk about some asset classes. And uh, you brought us here a slide, uh, which is uh, yeah, a little bit confusing, but I'm pretty sure you give us a, a nice clean up what it looks like because 2016 is, yeah, commodities and natural resources are leading. Why? So beginning of 2016, uh, we were posting like 2016 is a transformation year and uh, we've seen largely commodities as an asset class performing. And it's like we're saying, like uh, happy wife, happy life for you. Uh, this is the same for equity uh, segments uh, because lots of investors follow in commodity markets by investing in mining companies or oil and gas companies, so the whole natural resources equity universe. And if commodities are, are happy, um, investors in uh, resources are uh, more than happy. And this is what you see here in the matrix, just follow the colors. Uh, the more colorful um, there is uh, investment performance of natural resources and 16 was uh, again after five years of severe bear market, investors got hurt a lot, um, but commodity resources stocks uh, got outperformed, again, normal market, but also outperformed every other asset class on the planet. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. And uh, you brought us here also a manager survey versus the investment performance 2016. What, 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 what do you want to tell us with that? <laughs> that is like, uh, like housewives or like uh, uh, um, very skeptical investors, also institutional investors are uh, slow in following these trends. So you see here is on the right hand side uh, investment performance, um, for example, oil and gas positive, leading, uh, but uh, for example, resources, including the metal mining space in Europe, 50% performance. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen the index performing 50%, so this is an outstanding performance against uh, uh, broad equity markets. And at the same time, you see end of November, institutional investors are massively underweighting still uh, oil and gas and resources stock. Mm -hmm. So this means in this inner logic for 2017, uh, performance wise is still good. We have to start buying to be uh, at least neutral in this. So this creates lots of flow into the sector. Interesting. So that means that they have to beef up their positions. <laughs> exactly. Exactly like that. Okay, let's go in Medias Reis. Oil, gas, metals, mining or gold mines and all relative to the commodity, of course, in your view. So what to take? The first one we want to look like, you say oil and gas is expensive. That's interesting. Yeah, it has always been uh, a bit expensive, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when you uh, want to see where the real value in the moment is on the resources side, market cap wise, oil and gas is the biggest uh, segment. Uh, but compared, when you compare the uh, company valuation in terms of what is the share price uh, in regard to uh, oil prices, for example. This is like a very standard measurement when you see um, oil and gas companies in regard to oil prices are very high uh, in prices. So therefore, mm -hmm. dividends is a fine thing, but valuation in terms of the current performance has already been gone. So therefore, uh, for me, valuation is too high. Mm, so it's like a, if you want a dividend, secure dividend investment, that maybe makes sense. But if you want to have a share performance, mm, maybe you wait. Exactly. Okay, great. And let's have a look at metals and mining. Here you are neutral. That's interesting to me too, because I'm more positive on that side, but please explain why. De uh, depends probably from, uh, from that on the time horizon. Uh, when you see the MSCI World Metals and Mining Index uh, having the biggest mines like BHP, Glencore and Rio Tinto, for example, but, uh, until the small uh, mines, and you take uh, these companies as a proxy, as an index, and divide it to the level of base metal prices. So aluminium, copper, nickel, um, so that's the ratio uh, chart what I did here. Mm -hmm. So the screaming buy opportunity has been uh, uh, has been in January, February uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So from that level on, was like a desperation mode, and uh, share prices uh, doubled. For example, Glencore uh, take it uh, from 67 uh, British pence to up three uh, three, uh, three pound again. Wow. So that's, that's uh, tremendous. Oh. So yeah. therefore, uh, as an investor, you want to uh, to wait for a certain setback. You see in the longer term chart, it's still not expensive. So mm -hmm. therefore, it's neutral. But I think uh, timing wise, you can make a better job. And timing wise, uh, this is something as an active manager, you paid for to also select the timing. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And what does it, why do you say inexpensive, inexpensive gold and silver miners? That's what's interesting. Yeah, yeah especially So you mean the producers, right? The producers. Yeah. Uh, mainly because it's market cap weighted. When you compare the Philadelphia Gold and Silver Index, it's market cap weighted. For, so therefore, the, the producers are much more a bigger share of the index than the exploration companies. Uh, so these are directly influenced when the gold price is getting up. 
Uh, so having like a, a very good share price performance on that. You have also seen that uh, there has been a, a better time to buy, but in the long term picture, uh, gold and silver miners uh, are still very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So therefore having a big discount to the gold price. Yeah. So therefore if the gold price stays neutral or increases slightly, this means uh, the leverage effect of gold mines is probably a five, uh, four to five times effect. Now, and while we are talking, gold is $1,205, so just went through the 1200 I think uh, that hopefully it, it's a good sign, hopefully. <laughs> 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 we don't know, <laughs> right? Sure it is. Yeah, super. Justin, thank you very much for that insight and uh, yeah, let's see what happens this year. Pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Thorsten Delin, the chief strategist of uh, Tiberius. And yeah, you heard it. Uh, gold and silver miners are still inexpensive. Oil and gas, maybe you should wait. Uh, it's uh, still yeah, compared to the commodity a bit uh, too expensive, the companies or the, let's say the, the producers and the companies you can invest in. And uh, neutral are the metals and the miners here. Uh, so from that side, check it out. I'm your host, Jochen Steiger, Commodity TV, in partnership with Dukas Corby TV. Thanks for watching us. Bye-bye from Geneva.